So there was an earnings call for Warner Brothers Discovery after a merger a couple years ago, last year. I don't remember exactly when it was, but Warner Brothers and Discovery, they merged together. And so now they're a big company. Yay for big corporations becoming bigger. Love it. Um, but they merged. And ever since they've really struggled to get their feet under them. One of the things they've really struggled with is their streaming services. HBO Max has just notoriously burned through money. So that's been a point of contention and concern for investors. And then the other thing, of course, has been their video game business because that's something they've struggled to kind of get a hold on. And they started to get some momentum. Investors were really thrilled, honestly, with the success of Hogwarts Legacy. They're like, oh, this is a new generation where all of a sudden, we can expect Warner Brothers to come in and drop bangers of games that are selling basically over a billion dollars worth of revenue came in from Hogwarts Legacy. So that's awesome. If they can do this once a year or every other year, that's great. We're uh, we're in it. And they were hoping Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League would be another banger where they could very proudly uh, exclaim to everybody that they have done it again. But what's happened is that they are having a a rough quarter, or they had a rough quarter. Um, as you can see through this very, very scientific chart that's, uh, that's just popped, Warner Brothers Discovery shares. Can you tell when they announced the performance of the last quarter? <laughs> can you uh, deduct or deduce from this chart, from this graph, rather, when... They told everybody how uh, their recent ventures have been going. Well, if you guessed the cliff, you're right. So <laughs> they they announced uh, after close how all of this went. And you can see that shares have dropped in the last five days alone, 13%. And just from that close to the bottom was about 13%. Since then, it's recovered a little bit uh, yesterday and today, but still down 9 to 10% all told. Now, this was kind of multiple fold. It wasn't just the video game side of things. It's a handful of things. They did turn a profit on HBO Max. So that's actually generating revenue for like, or positive uh, profits for the first time in a while. So that's cool. I think first time ever, actually. Yeah. Max ended profitable, uh, 2023 profitable for the first time, and they expect it to continue being profitable in 2024. However, they refused to offer cash flow guidance for the year, which is a red flag. It's like if you're an investor in a company and you're like, how much like cash are you going to be getting flowing through your business over the next year? And they're like, we're not, we, uh, no, shut up. <laughs> it's, it's also a red flag for investors because it either shows that they are very worried the numbers are going to be bad. And so they don't want to say anything or they honestly have no idea because they have nothing really strong to put forward in the coming year. And so they just don't know. And I mean, that's a concern. That's a big concern. So that's a problem. And then also Warner Brothers Discovery, of course, is tied up in a lot of kind of legacy media. And so seeing like estimates for both revenue and earnings from advertising through to like traditional television and film uh, means seeing that revenue slump and projections and estimates for the future dropping. It just reaffirms like, okay, well, their business model is tied up in old school ways of doing things and they're starting to miss targets and expectations are dropping. And so you'd hope that they have a, like the next generation figured out. They have HBO Max, maybe their video game industry and, and uh, business is going to expand even more, but they just haven't figured that out yet. And so you're seeing a nine to 10% drop in share price. One of the things that was also revealed during this was uh, they were very coy about uh, Suicide Squad. Naturally, I mean, they're obviously not super, super uh, excited to describe how uh, the game did not perform as well as they wanted it to. But one of the things that they said was it did not perform to their expectations. And they said also the numbers will look even worse than they would normally because last February they had Hogwarts Legacy, which was the biggest game of the entire year. So they're like, yeah, they, they, when we look at it like year over year, you're going to see some really aggressive drops. J kind of like when we talked about uh, Square Enix, where Square Enix had like a 96% drop in profits in 2023 versus 2022. And it's like, 
yeah, they wrote off a lot of projects. They canned a lot of projects. So all of that money was lost and ended up in the expense column uh, of the equation. But also it was made even worse because they had such a tremendous 2022. Uh, not Square Enix. Did I say Square Enix? I meant uh, Bandai Namco, I believe it was. So uh, with, with Elden Ring blowing up in 2022, it kind of exaggerated the numbers. But with all this, it just reaffirms that again, the game did not perform to their expectations, which surprises basically Fearless no one. Fearless Wolf donated five pounds through <clears throat> Super Chat. Surely they looked at the Avengers game and saw what went wrong with that. Okay, so you're right. I, th I think they did look at the Avengers game and they changed some stuff. During that big delay, they took out like the gear score uh, when they delayed the game basically a year after the really negative gameplay feedback they got. They reworked it and got rid of the gear score. Didn't really do much because the game was built up at that point. And the thing about game development is that it's an iterative process where you're laying kind of like you set it and lock it, set it and lock it. And you're you're kind of building a staircase, if you think of it that way, where you're just trying to steadily make progress. It's not a matter of leaps and bounds or huge huge uh improvements and and leaps like if you just look at it kind of like this where is it boop, boop, boop. i think a lot of people think that video game development is kind of like you build your pillars and at any point in development if you want to come in and scrap this one and rebuild it into something else you can do that so for suicide squad hey we don't want it to be live service we don't want it to be so loot heavy Let's just swap out this pillar and put in like a narrative pillar instead. It doesn't really work that way because what video game development actually is, is like uh, you lay the foundation of gameplay systems. And then on top of that, you lay another layer of animation systems. And then you have like your loot system. And then you go up here and you have your combat and damage simulations and then you have like world building and just as you go you're stacking stuff on top of previous layers if i tell you hey we need to replace one of these these stacks we need to go in here and change this one you're gonna be like too bad we we can't it's too like it's too far gone it we're we just can't um uh, because it's just not how it works. You, you just can't. Um, to redo this chunk would basically constitute tearing down all of this and starting over, which is why for some games, it's like, we can't undo this. Our, our next best chance is to just start over basically with a sequel or a spinoff or something. And we just got to do something else. So it's just, you can't tear down the foundation and expect everything else to be fine like all of suicide squad was built on the live service component uh probably a lot of the foundation was laid before marvel's avengers imploded so by the time marvel's avengers comes along they're all the way up here and that game is received horribly and they're like well too late too late we got to leave this stack here so we're just gonna keep building on it try to reframe it a little better hopefully it works out and we can like shine it up and polish up the turd and everybody's happy but it just didn't end up working that way quite obviously some systems that they're designing like ubisoft scalar which we've talked about before has the potential to maybe make broad sweeping changes more possible because the engine is meant to be much more hot swappable is how i've heard it described where it's like hey if we have a problem with this system because the cloud basically ties all of the different engine pieces together instead of it all being in one umbrella they're like we should be able to swap that out and put in something else but i i, I mean we'll believe it when we see it the point with all of this though is just that suicide squad killed the justice league is currently not doing as hot as they were hoping i mean we're already sub a thousand and uh that's that's not what you want that's not what they wanted to see they needed this to be like the hell divers they needed this to have whatever hell divers is at this point uh, I think they just upped the player count, concurrent player count to like 700,000 is what they're capable of. So in the evening, this number could get to like 650,000 easy with 50,000 on PlayStation, um, which I think they'll achieve pretty easily. So they needed these player counts, 700 people in your game a few weeks after launch, and it's supposed to be a live service game is, is pretty rough. 
And this is made all the worse because apparently the patches and updates that they've dropped uh, are making the game actually worse and it's breaking it. So what was revealed is that the latest patch made the game worse, fans say. A recent patch for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has caused more issues than it fixed. The game's most recent patch was released yesterday with developer Rocksteady stating it would target various crashes, progress or progression blockers, connectivity issues, and several other server-side improvements. One of the things that you might not be aware of is that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, apparently, I didn't experience this, but a lot of people have been experiencing significant bugs, even locking them out of the game entirely. There were people on the Suicide Squad subreddit that had paid for the $100 deluxe edition and could not actually progress through the game. In some cases, they were just totally locked out of it because of some sort of server-side glitch. The fact that many people on the, the subreddit were reporting this is insane, that you could pay 100 bucks for a copy of a game and it just not work at all. That's crazy. And these are like the fans. These are the people that really are supporting your game the most. That's a problem. However, there are now numerous reports online of players encountering more issues than before. Quote, the recent patches screwed the game for a lot of people. One Reddit user acknowledged when another player said their copy of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League now wasn't loading past a black screen. That's not good. One step forward, two steps back. I tried four incursions, completed three, froze after doing Suicide Strike in one. Two of the incursions I completed got stuck at loading Metropolis. Uh, still can't increase mastery. I wanted a dub for them so badly. I just can't right now. Wow. Another user says this patch shouldn't have made it through certification, in my opinion. The game is practically going, hey, please stop playing for a bit and come back. And I'm just going to put it on the shelf until Joker DLC now, LOL. I'm not going to keep booting this game just to get booted myself. Pretty, pretty rough. <clears throat> pretty rough. Uh, even back in January, those who paid extra to get early access to the game were met with bugs on launch, including one which saw players having full story completion from the off. Yeah, that was funny. Uh, and servers were taken offline on more than one occasion. Yeah, there was a period for, I think, 18 hours during the early access, like 72 hour early access period, uh, where players just couldn't get into it because all of the servers were shut off. And so people paid for early access and couldn't get in. Rock City went on to give 2000 Luther coins of in-game currency to owners of the $100 version of the game in a bid to make up for the poor debut. However, apparently this wasn't made very clear. You have to talk to somebody in the base to redeem the coins. And a lot of people were reporting that this was bugged and they still could not get the coins, which is also amazing. Yeah, and this is kind of the new trend. I give up until another patch. At this point, two of my achievements are broken. I haven't been able to load in successfully more and more as each patch drops. I got the gold suits and put a ton of time into this game. Uh, plus, now it's completely unplayable. It makes me sad. For those of you still enjoying the game right now, I'm jealous and happy for you. 454 upvotes on the, the subreddit. Load times are a lot slower for me, at least on console. It takes five minutes just to get into the game. Same bro, not happy with it. Since this patch, I can't play incursions without getting this afterwards. Hope they fix it soon. I think uh, we're all in the same boat. The devs really have their work cut out for them, and it should have been done yesterday. Supposed to have season one start in a couple weeks as well. I'm not happy that Suicide Squad is always online. Shut up, hater. You're just a sheep. Well, here we are. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. And furthermore, they also went in and they nerfed vehicle farm and fire builds, but ignored the actual problems. I'm glad I hit rank 100 before this patch dropped. I'll delete it and play Elden Ring till season one drops. It's crazy that this game was delayed basically two years and it's still experiencing these problems. Like imagine what the game would have been like if it dropped a year ago or two years ago. What? Like that would have been insane because they're still having these server issues all this time later. I'm blown away that they're, they're still having these problems.